Ladies and gents, welcome to the reaction. This is Constantine Valdor, explained by an Australian. One more footy kill, or by the channel Major Kill. A custodian says a prime mark. I mean, that's what the thumbnail says. I mean, what the fuck? How is that possible? Because all the prime marks were created, they had their own legion, but custodians were created very later on, right? The best of the best of the best, or whatever that is, right? So yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, you know they're not. He's not an official Primark, but he's a leader of them. Or is that how it is? I don't know. But it's gonna be a fucking awesome video because whenever it's something about stories, it's always awesome. So let's watch it. G'day, guys and gal. Everyone likes custodians. No exceptions. Bitch, major kill. I said no exceptions. Their armor is cool. Their attitude is badass, and their skills are legendary. Not a single Custodes has ever fallen to chaos, and in recent lore, they're finally getting the love and the respect they deserve. You hear that guy, Haley? No more Custodes getting one shot by Harlequins these days. There is one Custodes that stands above the rest. A warrior so skilled. Okay, what the fuck was that? Why are Custodes getting one shot by Harlequins? I mean, look, uh, seeing the power level inside the Imperium makes sense, right? But how are we supposed to know who's what compared to the Xenos? Are Harley Quinns more powerful than Custodes? Is that what it is? How does that make sense? Uh, isn't Imperium supposed to be so powerful and overwhelming that they almost crippled the world? So after the heresy, they are kind of like tamed now. If the heresy didn't happen, uh, the Imperium would have been so powerful they would have, they would have overpowered everybody. Isn't that the part of the lore? If that's the case, how are they best of the best? Only people who's powerful than Kasturis are like, you know, Primarchs and Emperor himself, right? So how is Harley Quinn's just one-shotting them? I don't get it. Guild and powerful that he was considered a Primarch in all but name. Plus his name is criminally uh. badass. Cosentine Valdor. Like, bro, what <laughs> kind of like name Valor. is that? That's awesome. <laughs> With a huge recent reveal of Valdor in the lore, as well as him getting some time in the sun during the Horus Heresy, I thought now was as good as time as any to chat about the Banana King. So yeah, like, obvious spoiler warning, but every law video is full of spoilers, so get over yeah, I mean, it. Let's get I mean, into spoiler it. Spoiler warning, it's a lot The Emperor video. had a hard-on for Valdor when Valdor was just a young boy. <clears throat> Sorry, the Emperor was hell-bent on finding and turning Valdor into a custodian from day one. As the wars of unification rang out across Terra, the Emperor upheaved continents and moved entire armies across the world just to find Kozzi. Yes, I'm gonna call him Kozzi, because that's what he'd be called if he was in Australia. This lends a whole bunch of weight to the argument that Kozzi wasn't amazing because the Emperor wanked extra hard onto him, but because he himself was a legend regardless of if he was a custodian or not. The effort required to snag up this boy was not wasted. Kozzi would turn out to be a master assassin, a master warrior, a master diplomat, a master commander, and a master beta. He was literally the best at everything, <laughs> but he did it all in so basically our protagonist every time we play any RPG game, right? We're best at sneaking, we are most strongest, we have the most intelligence, we are diplomatic, why the fuck not? But Outer Worlds, New Vegas or whatever, that's what we are. <laughs> In a very straightforward way. For example, when he was sent to kill a bitch who stole some water, he was able to sneak past her army despite being in full golden plate. He then had a polite discussion with the bitch, <laughs> telling her his work? name and informing her that he would pass on any last words she had to the emperor. When she threatened to scream and sound the alarm, he calmly told her that- Okay, how does that work? Eight, nine feet tall in full golden armor, clearly not cracked. I guess they, they put some kind of a padding there with every piece so they don't clang with each other. Right? And just sneak past it. I'm just seeing the cartoonist image of him just sneaking past in the background. Even in dark, gold would reflect some light. Right? Some light scattering from somewhere, gold would reflect it. So how does that work? <laughs> that would just result in the death of her army as well as her. A great example of him being a master diplomat was when another bitch was going to betray the emperor and use some thunder warriors to arrest Kozzi. Now Kozzi knew she was a traitor. And he knew that he would have no issue massacring the Thunder Warriors and her in a single stroke if he had to. But instead, he took the time and effort to chat to her and basically convince her not to be a traitor. When she accepted this, he let her live and no one died. 
To show off how monstrous he was in combat, the Emperor made him a special spear which was actually designed to nerf him. He was literally unbeatable and could cut through armies like a whippersnipper cutting through grass. It got to a point that the Emperor was worried that Valdor was losing what little humanity he had left, hence the spear he gave to Valdor showed Valdor the soul of each person he killed as he killed them. He wanted to maintain Valdor's empathy and to stop him from becoming an automaton. You would think that learning the life story of everyone you killed would get a bit too so I would have become some form of Necron, is that it? Soulless Terminator. Alright. Why does this feel like, uh, you know, Vader type of theme, right? Like he, 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 he was given some kind of equipment that nerfed him. That's like Vader's, you know, Star Wars Vader's law, right? Uh, Palpatine gave him this suit so his power is not f at full potential because Palpatine was afraid he would overthrow him or some shit like that. This feels something like that. Oh, look at that. He was so powerful given this spear that actually made him weaker too heavy, but Valdor pretty much never let go of the spear and he accepted the burden that the Emperor had put upon him. Valdor does a bunch of other crazy OP shit that we will get to. I want to keep this video somewhat chronological, even though it's less a direct lore retelling and more so a deep dive into Valdor's character whilst using the lore as examples. Does that make sense? It doesn't to me. Let's continue. Now it's not entirely clear how the Emperor wanted to shape Kozzi. He made Kozzi a slave to his will and a tool for his use, which eroded most of Valdor's humanity, but he didn't want just an effective robot either. Whilst Valdor was totally cool with just being the Emperor's bitch, even admitting he knew he had no true free will and that the Emperor had taken everything for him, the Emperor seemingly became less cool with it. It's almost like the Emperor realized that the path he had set down for humanity was full of sacrifice and all-round shittiness, so he did what he could to try and save a few souls along the way. The Unification Wars began to wrap up, because, you know, mutants cosplaying as characters from Mad Max don't tend to fare too well against people like Kozzi and Kozzi is then told to cull the Thunder Warriors. The reason for the culling was that the Thunder Warriors were crudely made and had anger management problems as well as raging cancer. If you're going to save mankind and be seen as the heroes, it's best not to have all your warriors look like a bunch of Batman villains. Hence the Thunder Warriors... Okay, we know what I just realized that you can make a, a movie about Thunder Warriors. Name it Thunder Warriors. Just show the normal storyline what actually happened. And they would seem like the protagonist and emperor and the Imperium as really bad guys, like really evil. This is what I love about Warhammer 40k. Because there's many movies like that, right? Where uh, somebody employs some kind of a people and in the end they try to kill them because your usefulness has expired or whatever, right? It's just like very heartless. Like really, we are just some piece of equipment that's now old, you're gonna throw us away. That's the mentality with Thunder Warriors, which is fucking awesome. That movie would really work were rounded up and mowed down by Valdor and the other custodies without too much effort. One legion of Thunder Warriors were able to escape the slaughter and they led a counterattack against the Imperial Palace as a bit of a fuck you. Totally fair enough in my opinion. As the Thunder Warriors charge, the first Space Marines to be made fought them and were dominating them. When the leader of the Thunder Warriors fought Valdor, he was quickly curb stomped and got murdered pretty hard. Adios Thunder Warriors. Now whilst this had been going on, the Emperor had begun to work on the Primarchs and Valdor wasn't a fan. The Primarchs were the first things the Emperor had created that were entirely unpredictable. Now being unpredictable is different from lacking free will. The Thunder Warriors had plenty of free will, but were predictably put down without much effort after fulfilling the roles they were predicted to do. The Primarchs, however, were a massive wildcard, and whilst Valdor was like, bruh, he didn't push the issue much and he trusted the Emperor's judgement. Whoops. The Primarchs are scattered and the Great Crusade begins. Now during the start of the Crusade, the Emperor was very active in purging and Valdor fought by his side. They delivered unbelievable amounts of ass kicking to anyone that didn't immediately drop to their knees or bend over. Kozzi doesn't have a whole lot of deep lore around this point, as the attention went more towards finding the Primarchs and their own little quests, and less about how hard the Emperor and the Custodes were skull-fucking orcs to death. This combined with the fact that Kazi is not a super opinionated or talkative guy meant that even during the Council of Nikia, which was a little gathering the Emperor- <laughs> How big is the handle of the sword? This is comical. Even his hands are extremely tiny compared to it. Like, this is some next level shit. Alright. I, I just thought like, what if Emperor didn't create Prime Market, didn't do much of anything? What type of- people the humanity would be and i just only thought that came to my mind is tau right imperium would be like tau 
whatever technology they would come upon would be ex- like Tao. Only reason Imperium is so uh, you know OP and badass is because of all the shit that Emperor did with the Prime Works and things. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Emperor put together to decide whether or not it's okay for humans to shoot lightning out of their cocks. He favored neither side, and he just kind of watched. As a fun little side note here, it's rumored that during sparring matches, Valdor was able to beat numerous Primarchs and he even beat Horus. It really came down to a skill versus power thing. Valdor was more skilled than most of the Primarchs and he was significantly older than all of them, but their raw strength and bullshit OP Primarch hacks were greater than Valdor's. When the Emperor decided it was time to finally paint his fuck huge backlog of minis, he went back to Terra and he took Kozzi and his custodies with him. As we know, this didn't pan out so well, as Horus was turning into a dickhead and fell to chaos. Magnus, trying to be a good guy in the wrong way, psychically projected himself to the Emperor, knocking off a huge bottle of Nuln oil in the process and ruining the Emperor's minis. This caused the Emperor to rage and send Valdor as well as Lehman to go bring Magnus back home for a huge spanking. Now Valdor was a good call to send, Lehman was not, hence when they arrived at Prospero to grab Magnus, Lehman instead attacked the planet with the intention of killing Magnus. Valdor was like, what the fuck bro, relax. But then he saw the Thousand Sons had continued to use warp spaghetti in violation of the Emperor's edict, hence he happily joined the slaughter. On the battlefield, Valdor was a genuine beast. His highlight being him taking on 30 elite Thousand Sun warriors who were able to see the future, hence predict all of Valdor's attacks. Well, just because you can see something coming, doesn't mean you can stop it. If Stephen Hawking predicted that in 30 seconds, the rock would body slam him, he's got 30 seconds to say goodbye. Valdor tore through all 30 of these warriors, and he only suffered a single wound, which he just kind of copped and then continued killing. With Prospero destroyed, Kozzi would come home and immediately be required to deploy the custodies to the now fucked up human webway in order to hold back the tide of demons. To make matters mm. even more worse, Horus revealed his betrayal and all but wiped out the Salamanders, Raven Guard, and Iron Hands. The Custodes and Valdor weren't able to go out and deal with Horus as their full attention was now on trying to clear out the webway. With the Horus heresy in full swing, Valdor took off. Yeah, that does make sense, right? If you create this kind of a character that's op than anything, even the Primarchs and the Custodes, the OP of the OP, right? Like too many OPs are thrown around. Like what what do you do during the Horus Heresy? Like if they go to anyone, like any like Horus or anything, they would kick their ass. So it's this kind of a, you know implementation is good that they were in the web way, you know keeping the demons in the bay because demons are way too much in number and way bigger of threat now, right? Than just to deal with some primarchs. So that way you can clear them side, right? This is a problem with many lores and anything that people create that. Once you hype something up, like make something too big, it's very hard to implement them somewhere else without showing, like, you know, uh, just showing some bullshit. Like, you know, oh, they were just held back for reasons. Like, why? Why weren't they too OP like they were? It's really hard to, you know, go around that. But I like this one. ...up a position on the Imperial War Council and help dictate and direct the Loyalist armies, whilst the Emperor was busy playing Paradox Billiards Vostrian Roulette 4th Dimensional Hypercube Chess Strip Poker against Titsnitch. It was Valdor who put together the team of elite assassins and sent them to kill Horus. Dawn wasn't a fan of this because he's all about building and honor and shit, whilst Valdor is all about getting shit done. The assassination failed and no more was sent out. When the Siege of Terror occurred, Valdor once again made the traitor Astartes his bitch. He raw doggied them time and time again, reliving the lives of countless traitors and even demons. Time and time again his mind and soul were exposed to the pure corruption of chaos with every kill he made, yet he didn't even flinch or bulk. Despite putting in a fat shift, <laughs> he could not prove <laughs> Every time, <laughs> you know, corruption is trying to take him, right? Uh, Nurgle, known as directly trying to, you know, connecting a connection and whatever. <laughs> Saikin is like, let me, let me be finished here. Then I'm coming to the war, into chaos and kicking your ass, Nurgle. Nurgle, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Prevent Horus from turning the Emperor into a vegetable, even though Horus was killed as a result and the traders had lost. Now, pretty much everyone felt despair when the Emperor was kind of killed. The Custodes entered into a deep depression and refused to leave the palace. The Primarch's mm. daddy issues got turned up to 11, with the lion even stabbing Lehman in the chest with his sword. You would think that Valdor, <laughs> the Emperor's greatest servant other than Malkador, would be completely shattered and heartbroken, but he was actually the one that encouraged the Primarchs to dust themselves off. He mm, told Lehman that there was still light and glory ahead for mankind, and not to give up hope. Valdor and Lehman had a special bro code, which was symbolized by both of them being given matching spears by the Emperor. Whilst Valdor never put his down, Lehman refused to pick his up. 
talk about so bad as read in the end soil by Oh look, they have matching weapons, isn't that cute? <laughs> it was pretty cute, you know. Soon after this, Valdor <laughs> left into exile to pursue the unknown. Until recently, he's back, baby, and by God, he hasn't been idle. Basically, in the latest Eisenhorn book, the identity of the king in yellow was revealed to be Kozzy. The king was a mysterious dude who seemed to be at odds with the protagonist, but it turns out it was okay. just Kozzy trying to single-handedly carry the Imperium. He's found himself a pocket dimension in which he is making a fuck off huge army of blank clones, good guy demons, and some kind of variant of Space Marine. It's all a bit vague, but general theme is that he's preparing for something big. The characters theorize Ooh. that he's trying to discover the true name of the Emperor, which obviously has set off some alarm bells. There's a theory that the Emperor's true name, in combination with the Tree of Life, could be enough to get the Emperor's bony ass off the Golden Throne. Considering Damn. Valdor and Russ are two sides of the same coin, have matching spears, and are both seemingly trying to resurrect the Emperor, this actually makes a lot of sense. Until Kazi explains a bit more though, it definitely comes off as a bit heretical. In saying that though, Kazi has always been a super practical guy. If an army mm. of blanks, mutated space marines- Herod? I mean, come on, heresy? He would punch anybody who says a heresy because he was there before even the Primarch, he was there with the Emperor. He knows that Emperor don't like shit like that, all this heresy and crap, inquisition and crap is his later on thing. He, he don't give a shit about that. ...and friendly demons is the best way to go about something, you bet your ass Valdor is gonna use them. Or maybe mm. I'm just completely wrong and the Banana King is sick of everyone's shit and wants to genocide the galaxy. Either way, I'm on <laughs> his side. And that does us for today, guys. The lore and story of Cosentine. God, there was so much information. I fucking love it. I didn't even know someone like him exists, but apparently he's the most powerful of them all. Apparently, besides Emperor, he can kick every Primarch's ass and everything. And I just assumed, like, oh, okay. I, I guess soon he's gonna tell me that he died during the heresy or some shit. But no, he's actually there, still there. And, uh, one of the updates says that he's actually gathering an army or something, trying to resurrect Emperor. So, Emperor's Resurrection is just like, everybody's predicting that, even the way GW talks about it, it's just like coming, right? It's just, it's just like, yeah, Emperor's gonna come back. And it just makes sense, you, you know, slowly resurrecting Primarchs, like, Resurrection of Emperor, that would be a big shit, right? Everybody would just, you know, that's as big PR as he can get, look at that, Emperor's back. And Warhammer's way too big, like, way too many people love Warhammer. And one thing the Warhammer lacks is a proper medium, right? Uh, it, it doesn't have much TV shows, movies, games, and things like that. I don't know who made it. Was it Lutin or somebody made a video about that? Was it Bricky? I don't remember. Who talked about like how it's lacking certain type of uh, exposure like that, right? So, I, you know, I know the TV show is on the way with Henry Cavill making a sh you know show about yeah, Warhammer. Um, I guess Henry Cavill's favorite team is also Custodies, I guess if I remember correctly. But yeah. So he's making a show. I'm sure, you know, the gaming industry is going to get more stronger. I'm hoping for an open world RPG style game. Open world is like too much to hope for. RPG style game. If it's like original Mass Effect trilogy, like it's not proper open world, but it just goes from places to place. It is a galaxy. It would be really awesome, man. But yeah, hope for Warhammer is really big in the next few decades. I don't know how Warhammer 40k's world would be in 2050. Who the fuck knows? Look, when Marvel Comics came out, it was big but big with nerds. Most people don't give a shit about it. And look at it now. Like, biggest thing that is is Marvel movies. Like, superhero shit. So, Warhammer might not be that big now, even though it's rising. In a decade or two, it might be like how Marvel is now, right? The movie industry would be dominated by it. TV shows, games. Who knows who know where the games will be? It would be like, like real-life simulation type of shit with VR. And who knows where the gaming industry will go? Watermark could dominate a lot of things, but it's, yeah, it'd be fun. Well, uh, that was Constantine Valdor, a badass guy that I never heard about, but I'm going to remember now, you know, by the channel Major Kill. If you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.